Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Path Behind the Modules. This is lesson four, numbers raised to the zeroth power. Zero. Okay, classwork. I'm going to skip over this for now and go right to exercise one. So just go to exercise one, and it says list all possible cases of whole numbers M and N for identity one. So here's identity one right here. I'm just not going to do this definition. More, more precisely, when M is positive and N is positive, we already know that one is correct. So if we have two X to the second, X to the third, we're going to need X to the fifth. What are the other possible cases of M and N for which one is yet to be verified? Okay, so what this is saying is we were only working in this last lesson before today that, or earlier today, that we were using positive numbers, positive integers, M and N. Okay, so what are the other possible cases for M and N for which one, bringing this one, one, Yet to be verified. So here's one case A. We have M is positive. That's okay. We've done that. M is greater than zero. What we have not done when M equals zero. So we have a positive number M and N equals zero. Uh, another case is. M equals zero, and N is the positive number. And then the final case, case C, M equals N, which equals zero. In other words, M and N are both zero. So we're going to have X to the zero times X to the zero equals X to the zero plus zero. Okay, exercise two. Check that equation one is correct for each of the cases listed in exercise one. Okay, so for A, how about x to the m times x to the zero? So m is some positive number and n is zero. Will that equal x to the zero? I'm sorry, x to the m. Will that equal x to the m? That's the question. Case b will be m equals 0 and n is greater than 0. So how about x to the 0 times x to the n equals x to the n? Is that true? So these are questions. We're not certain yet. We have to verify. And then finally, C would be when M and N are both at zero. So that would be X to the zero times X to the zero. Does that equal X to the zero plus zero, which is X to the zero? That's another question. So those are our three case scenarios that we're going to check. Okay, so let's look at this. X to the M times X to the zero equals x to the m times 1. x to the 0 is equal to 1. So no matter what x is, if you put in your calculator 5 to the power of 0, it will tell you it is 1. So then when I take x to the m times 1, well that's a multiplicative identity, and that is going to get us x to the m. And the question mark is, is it going to equal x to the m? So the answer is yes. Now we're going to try the next one. Well, x to the 0 times x to the n equals 1 times x to the n, which is going to equal x to the n. That's what we said, so that is also yes. And the last one, 
x to the 0 times x to the 0 equals x to the 0. Is that true? Well, x to the 0 is 1. And x to the 0 is 1. And 1 times 1 equals 1. So that is true. Or it actually equals x to the 0, which is 1. So yes, that is true. Exercise 3. Do the same with equation 2 by checking it case by case. So you're going to go back to here. x to the m times n equals, equals x to the m n. So you're going to do x to the m times n. Okay, so parentheses. Equals x to the m n. So we're just going to follow this scenario here. Three cases, A, B, and C, and we're going to write these out. So we're just replacing M and N with M and 0, or 0 and 0, in all three cases. Okay. So I'm just trying to follow the same template here. X to the M times X to the 0 equals X to the M. I'm going to do x to the m times x to the zero, or times zero. x to the m times zero equals x to the, what's the rule of that saying? It says it equals x to the m times m. So it's going to equal x to the m times zero. Is that true? The next one will be x to the zero times n is going to equal x to the 0 times n. Is that true? And then the last one is going to be x to the 0 to the 0. Is that going to equal x to the 0 times 0? Okay. So x to the m times 0 equals m times 0 is 0, and x to the 0 is 1. So 1 equals x to the 0. So x to the 0, m times 0 is 0, x to the 0 is 1. And 1 equals x to the 0 times m. Okay, so m is any number. So x to the fifth times zero would be x to the fifth power times zero, which would be x to the zero, which is one. So no matter what number we plug in for m, we're always going to get x to the m times zero, which is one. So that is true. So yes. The next one is if I have x to the zero in the parentheses and then n outside. And is that going to equal x to the 0 times n? Okay, well, x to the 0 times n is x to the 0 as well, and that is 1. So if x to the 0 is 1, I take it to the 5th power, 1 to the 5th power, 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, is still 1. So that is yes. Finally, x to the 0, again to the 0, does that equal x to the 0 times 0? And anything 0 times 0 is 0, and that equals 1. So x to the 0 is 1. 1 to the 0 is 1. So yes, that is true. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Okay, now we're going to do exercise 4, which is case 3. So if we go back here, case 3 was xy to the power of n equals x to the n, y to the n, the distributive property. So I'll just write that here x, y, to the n, equals x to the n, y to the n. So case A is going to be x, y, to the 0. Is that equal to x to the 0, y to the 0? 
Well, x times y, if these are numbers, 3 times 2, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 to the 0 would be 1. x to the 0 is 1, y to the 0 is 1, so that would be 1 times 1, and that equals 1. So even if I had two numbers in here, 5 and 4 even, 20 to the 0 is still 1, so that works. Yes. B. Since n is positive, we already know that 3 is valid. Okay, so there's a positive number. And then C is, this is the same as case A, which we have already shown. So that's all we had to do on that one. Because there's only one variable here. So that's it. It's valid. Three is valid. Exercise five. Write an expand, write the expanded form of 8,374 using exponential notation. Okay. In this case, eight is one eight is in the thousands position. Three is in the hundreds position. Seven is in the tens position. And four is in the ones position. Okay. And we know that anything to the zero power is one. Ten to the one is ten. Ten squared is a hundred. And ten to the third power is one thousand. So eight thousand three hundred seventy-four equals, we're going to just take the first number, and it's going to be 8 times 10 to the third. Because 10 to the third is 1,000. 8 times 1,000 is 8,000. And then we're going to add 3 times, see if you can finish this, pause the video and see if you can finish this path. Okay, here we go. So it's 3 times 10 need 100, so it's 10 squared plus the next number is 7. So that would be 7 times 10 to the first power. 7 times 10 is 70. And then finally, plus 4 times 10 to the 0 power. Because 0 is 1, 10 to the 0 is 1, 4 times 1 is 4. So there is expanded form using exponential notation. Do this one here. We have ones, so that's a zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this is going to become six times ten to the six plus nine times ten to the five plus eight times ten to the four plus five times 10 cubed plus, now we have a zero here, still put it there, zero times 10 squared, zero times 100 is zero, plus six times 10 to the one, plus two times, two, Lesson four, do the exit ticket on lesson four before you leave, and then do your problem set.